for Christmas You can on me Okay, Luke Please shaved his beard into a snow. giant, or his beard was small, but he still had like the giant stash. So it looked um, Yosemite Sam or Boyer ish. <laughs> Boyer. You know, like and the handlebar, he, the handlebar mustache. Yeah, but it wasn't twisted or anything. It was just bigger than his face. And he was really almost assertive about keeping it. And I was like, oh. Oh, I don't know about that. Because I didn't think he was serious. In your semi-assertive way? Yeah. And then I said, no. And then it turned out that he really did love it. And now I kind of feel bad that I I feel like I've seen him do the thing before. He He has has. done it. He does the wax and stuff. And he has great facial hair. So I hate to be the one who's like, don't don't let your, you know, true color shine. But at that moment, I was like, oh, God, no. Ellen doesn't like the beard until it gets grown out a little bit. Then she likes it. But then every once in a while, I'll just shave the entire thing. She's like, what are you doing? No, you yeah. have to do something. Says I look like I'm 35 again or something. Yeah, Luke it, leaned so. in to kiss me one night after shaving his beard, and I was taking a nap, and I thought it was his dad, and I had a whole meltdown because he looks just like his father that's, when he shaves. It's a little weird. I know. Freudian as hell. It is. Uh, let's just skip uh, over that. Speaking of Freudian, <laughs> not the same, but uh, I guess line. similar. Yeah. The Mandela effect. Dude. Okay. Has this not been going through anybody else's news? You know what's freaking weird? So you messaged me today. Okay. This. Oh, I always try to come up with an idea. Yeah. So this airs on a different day. I don't know when, but today is Brittany's actual birthday. Today's Thursday. Happy, Happy birthday. Thank birthday. You. birthday Thank you. To Thank my love. You. Uh, So she sends me a message that is, as I'm toiling over what we're going to talk about, kind of try to come up with ideas because she always carries the load there. I'm like, oh, Mandela Effect has been everywhere in my newsfeed and on my podcast and everything that I'm listening to is Mandela Effect. And she messages me, hey, have you seen this? And it's like two different shorts from like Instagram or something talking about Mandela Effect. How wild for one. The two things were uh, the first. One that's not as so great it was the um, Ben Crosby. Am I Bing saying Bing Crosby? Crosby. Bing thank Crosby. you, thank you. Yes. Um, and then what was it? I'll be home for Christmas. And the line, what was it again? You, you can, can call on me or count on me. It was count, count on me. me. Yeah. And yes, there are uh, recordings, and recordings of, of yes. him saying it, but the. It's you can plan. You can plan, plan on me. Yes. I don't think so, guys. I, I mean, just don't think so. Every there, there are a lot of accounts saying that they remember it is count on me. You know how many people have sung that song though over the years? I mean, that song's been covered you almost as much as Happy that, Birthday. You're the only one that has said uh, I remember it plan on me. Yeah, um, I, re- I remember it. Brandy, do you remember it plan or count? You can plan on me. Count on me. Well, you got some voices. It's count. I guarantee it's it. count. See? Plan. Thank but, you. But guess plan. what? In it's if plan. you look at it, the if you look Bing it up Crosby on Google, it says plan. Bing All right. Crosby was a fascist. It's, <laughs> if you look it up on Google, it says plan. A lot so of that going around these days. Uh, you can plan on me. Mandela effect number one that okay. I sent. Here's the here's second one. one, though. The big one. This is the one that's going to blow, I think, everyone's mind. Yeah. Uh, Ed McMahon Hello. being on Publishers Clearinghouse. There is, it, 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 does, it doesn't exist. And like, you know, there are different, um, there was a Golden Girls archive where uh, Betty White says, what? Ed McMahon's coming with Publisher Clearinghouse? It doesn't exist. Google it, people. Like this, he just be, he, he did he work. He did American Family, but he there, also did Publishers so Clearinghouse. But he wasn't on the Prize Patrol. No, okay, he yeah, he not. was like the spokes guy. No, for, no, no. He wasn't. Mandela. Well, I don't effect. care. You guys are lying to me. He wasn't. No, Google it. Okay, so okay. some more, some more. Well, no, no. I want to say though that the initial on on the naming of the Mandela effect. Is yeah, because, because people of, yeah. think that Nelson Mandela died, died in, in prison. prison. He didn't. I knew that. No, he was in you prison. Say you knew no, this. No. Yes, I knew this. He, he became president. He became like the first elected president of South Africa. I don't know if it was ever or for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. After he got out of He's prison. The first democratic. I knew this. Uh, yes. Elected. So the whole okay. naming of it is a misnomer. Hang on. 
No, it's but not. I have to say that just because Google says something doesn't mean see Randy with plan doesn't mean that it's that's the case and put my tinfoil hat on what what, what are these for you never take your tinfoil hat off no but it's like this test to see if we will remember things and you can like chat gpt or google why this is happening and they're like oh it's cognitive bias or it's uh like social programming or suggestive uh suggestive in nature and we're just so susceptible bullshit here's one here's one for you okay uh the line luke i am your father yeah okay doesn't say luke it's not that no says, no I, I am your, your father. father mirror is mirror it because on the wall mm -mm. what is it magic mirror mm -mm. on the wall bullshit okay here's another one and this is the my first experience with Mandela. Oh, I know what you're going to say. Bernstein? Yes. Berens or Bernstein? No, it was Bernstein. I it was E I N. this. Now they're saying A-I-N. Can we find books, I wonder, that... Here's what you can find. And again, you can't like, trust Google, everything on Google the internet. Google and internet can erase things. Yeah, 100%. But if there's actual books out there... Here's another one, though. Fruit of the Loom, the cornucopia with the fruit. It was on the logo. And now you have people, and who knows what's doctored, coming to the internet with their pictures of their whitey tidies or their white tees with the cornucopia with the fruit. I don't know what's doctored and what's not. Here's what I remember. There was a cornucopia. It just because looked, I think it's my first experience It just experience looked like there was a cornucopia that. in the front of the fruit of the looms. Well, I just feel like that was my first experience with it. And shut up, Bob. I know I didn't. I was letting it go. I know that that happens. Like there's, I know that some of these things, even in my own brain, you can try to convince me otherwise. I will fight you. You can't. Fight to the death. I'm ungaslightable. You can't gaslight me. Oh, God. Okay. So then there are plenty of other uh, instances where this is happening. And in my mind... Let's do it. Mm -hmm. It's like, how easily can we convince people that they are and have been wrong? And then it's like, oh, my God, am I crazy? Did I do this? And I think it's happened so many times since, like, all of these instances. The government bought Google. It's insane. Okay? So call me what you will, but I think that what we remember, even if it's only true to us, is how it is. Did you see Period. that the government is trying to make Google sell Chrome? Because the, they believe No, they so have. did the government buy Google? I was no, just saying that. No, the like government kind didn't of... buy them, but the, but the government is attempting to force them to sell Google so they did buy them monopoly no this the FTC is trying to make mm -hmm. them sell ah, speaking of monopoly it off. there's another one did the monopoly guy ever have a monocle what Mr. Yeah. Monopoly mm -hmm. did, never had a monocle no what yes he did no, yes he, he did no he didn't oh how did I know what a monocle was then yeah no Mr. kidding Hogan, Hogan, Hogan's Heroes <laughs> no I never uh, watched that Colonel bullshit Clank. you no. never watched Hogan's Heroes no I'm no I'm not that old no, sorry. It was on... Is, wait. It was on, like, WGEM, though, when you were... Well, no, that was a long time ago. Okay, it probably wasn't. It's on so. WeTV right now. Yeah, yeah, you can watch it. Nah. Is it good? It's I guess I shouldn't yeah. knock it it's until hilarious. I try it. It's I hilarious. have no idea what you're it's, talking it's, about. So the Heroes, monocle the of... The not about the Nazi concentration camp... Or not concentration camp. The Nazi prisoner camp in uh, Stalag 13. Nope. I know nothing, Sergeant Schultz. Not nope. to be confused with Jim Schultz on Revenge the Replay. So nope. wacky Nazis, <sighs> those wacky know. fellas. What seriously? They no. made, I mean, and when they pitched that, they're like, "Oh, we're, we can't make Nazis funny." They made Nazis funny. Uh, and to bring it, bring it back around, Bing Crosby Productions made that show. Yes. Oh. Well, well, I don't gosh. know. It's too much for me because I'm like this. I don't trust it, and this is just one more reason for me to keep my hat on and charge forward with. Wearing our tinfoil hats. Well, and just being self-assured that I know what I know. You're not about to trick me, folks. <laughs> and you can't. catch me on a good day, and I will fight you until you believe me. You can't Mandela affect me. No, you can't. Uh, the other one was uh, we're going to need a bigger boat from Jaws. Mm, I don't remember that either. Captain Quint. I mean, there's there's some discrepancy in what the line actually yeah. was there. So interesting. Well, I'm um, going to segue here. Uh, one of the biggest. You're not supposed to say when you're segueing. I'm, I get to. I get to. I do it every time, <laughs> and I get to. Hey, here's my segue. Flash, flash, flash. <laughs> it's 
it's my birthday, so I get to do it. It's my birthday. Mm-hmm. It's my and, birthday. Um, so, and I'm also going to read this so I don't cry. Uh, one of the biggest effects uh, on my life that is beyond unforgettable is the day that I met the love of my life. Um, it was a bit unconventional, but then again, everything we do is. He has been the best husband, father, and friend, and I've been blessed to call him mine. I'm not the only person on the community that he's impacted as he's everyone's favorite high school history teacher and one of Quincy's finest musicians. He's now launching his talents into an online masterpiece he's announcing with us today. Stay tuned for a great interview conducted by my muddy buddies. (laughs) For my mic. Yeah. Mr. Mike Scholl. Yay. We'll be right back. I can't believe you did that without crying. Thank you. Yay. You can count on me. The Liquor Booth is your home for a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits. The Liquor Booth has two locations in Quincy, 3520 Broadway and 1500 North 12th Street. The Liquor Booth, where it's always happy hour. Exploring the art, culture, and community of the Q and the surrounding areas. So I've wanted to do something uh, interesting with local musicians uh, for a long time now. Um, And I I knew that I wanted it to be live. And I knew that I wanted to sort of try and capture that thing that live music does. So, you know, in the world of recording where you can do a million takes and and splice all these things together, I feel like the side effect of that is you lose a little bit of the magic. So I started to think about ways around that and I came up with the premise of one microphone picking up everything and then local musicians uh, performing, playing in beautiful and interesting places. Uh, So that's the premise of this web series. Uh, and, and we've shot a bunch of them so far. Uh, I've shot one. I did one with Megan Peters, uh, Devante and TK from Windbreaker, Katie Smith and Corey Tappy, Cheeks McGee. Uh, I've got some in the works by Jackie and Levi, Garrett Morris, uh, and then I've got a lot of other ones that are sort of too far away in the planning period to tell you yet, but they're exciting and they're interesting and they're going to be shot in really spectacular places. So yeah, so that's the premise, you know. Uh, One microphone, one take, local musicians playing in beautiful and interesting places. So here we go. Welcome to One Mic. Brought to you by Queued Up, exploring the art, culture, and community of the queue and the surrounding areas. And welcome back, and welcome Mike Schull. All right. Yeah, Mikey! Hey. <laughs> Glad to be here. Other, other podcasts have stolen you, but yeah. this time we've got you, so yeah, I've been that's on, good. I think I've been on Frankie Say three times. Yeah. I, think I hold the record for Frankie Say. you got the, uh, we're going to have jackets like they do on mm-hmm. SNL, when you make a host of that's certain times. That's what I want. Yeah, robe, so, sometimes robe, you save the best for last. <laughs> that's right. There you go. So, <laughs> so what, uh, we're going to look at, we just looked at uh, something that uh, was pretty impressive, I thought. Well, if by impressive you mean brings goosies, goosebumps, I think it's something that is a long time coming because Quincy has such talent, such heart when it comes to Mm -hmm. musical ability. And no one gets to see it unless they're into kind of like the bar scene or Mm -hmm. right, like open mics or um, going to uh, different events. But I think this is going to be outstanding. So first of all, Tell us, tell us a little bit. Well, about so it. yeah, so it's so the so it's like a show. It's like a web series, and the web series is called Queued Up with a Q. Great name, <laughs> dude. Right. Great freaking yeah. name. Nice marketing. Um, yeah. And so this this um, branch of Queued Up is the one mic sessions, and so basically the premise is <clears throat> one microphone, uh, you know, one take. You can do more than one take, but we're capturing one performance. 
So if you screw up or something, yeah, we might stop and do it again. But like one mic, one take, um, local musicians, and then beautiful or interesting places is what I've been saying. So like, you know, we've shot some in churches. I shot one in my basement. Uh, we shot one in Spring Street Bar. We shot one in EFB Coffee. Uh, we're shooting one on Saturday in the Children's Museum, the old paper box building. Uh, so just like interesting places. And yeah, I agree that like, I like I think for me, this whole idea kind of got going like maybe like on a subconscious level, like during COVID. Because what you saw was like a lot of people, like a lot of local musicians because like the, you know, everything shut down. So local music was like a, a, a like a no, a no go. Yeah. So ultimately, like there were people who were like posting stuff online of like little concerts that they did. But most of them, like, weren't, like, great quality. And um, it just kind of got me thinking, yeah, about, like, the multitude of talent that we have in this town and just trying to capture, like, really kind of, like, authentic performances by people that are done kind of, like, an artistic way, shot well, recorded well. The mic that I have that is picking all this up that is the mic that we use today um, to record my performance uh, is um, – it's a – AEA R88A, which is like a stereo, high fidelity microphone, so it it sounds really good. And then there's also like like the one on Saturday that we're shooting. I think there's like four musicians, so you gotta kind of kind of like bluegrass style. You have to kind of stagger everything everybody around the mic to make sure that you know that yeah. you get it sounding right. Yeah. Right. Um, you uh, of course you've always been uh, artistically musically inclined. You were an A building kid I was, at yeah. Quincy High. And then you went to that god awful school on the other side of Missouri. <laughs> Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Um, KU. And uh, did is that where you started like playing? Well, so I moved to I I didn't move to Lawrence with the idea of like going to college. I just w- when I was nineteen, my band picked up and we left and we went to Lawrence because man, in the early two thousands, Lawrence's music scene was like bar none, uh, just unbelievable people coming through all the time, unbelievable local talent. So we went there to play, to play Kansas City, and to play like we kind of toured all the surrounding areas. Um, so then it's when I was there that I kind of went back to school to get a teaching degree. My, what I always say is like I became a teacher because I got tired of being like really poor. And I just wanted to be kind of poor. Yeah. So it was like a step up to become a teacher, I guess. But yeah. So and then, yeah, and so then I moved back here and um, – you know, try to keep try to keep it going in one way or, the, or another. You there's know? there's a great scene in the uh, mm-hmm. the Aaron Sorkin series, The Newsroom, where the main anchors uh, he likes to play guitar and then wander off and go to bars. And <laughs> a little kid goes uh, when he sees him playing the guitar, he goes, "Oh yeah, you uh, play some guitar on the side." He goes, "No, I play guitar. I'm a news anchor on the side." <laughs> yeah. right, so right, I think right, that's yeah. kind of you as a well, teacher. I I, th- I think that like um, like for me, like I practice a lot. Like I I invest a lot of time in this group. When it's not like your main moneymaker, there's almost like a like a mental illness involved in this because it's like there's there's not much of a return. So if you're doing this, if you're just like beating your head against the wall, like working at something um, and trying to make it cool, you know, it's it's, um, it's passion, man. Yeah, That's there's right. not it's a passion. lot of uh, there's well, not a lot of return on that bliss. investment. So I was talking bliss. to Brittany downstairs, and I you know I was like you know it's. Okay, so let's go ahead and say Brittany is your wife, right? Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite people and one of Bob's and everyone in this room. Depends on the day. But it, well, I, right? Uh, but I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not musically inclined. And she was like, well, I would beg to differ. You just maybe didn't have someone encouraging or you didn't have the determination or you didn't have the drive. or. So I'm curious to know, yeah, you came back because you wanted to make money, but what kind of promoted your love in music or what started you on this path that you were like, I know I can be good at this. We like, uh, we got a, a piano in my house when I was a kid and my sister was originally, my older sister was originally taking piano lessons and then she stopped. And so this piano was just sort of sitting there and I just kind of started playing it on your and, own. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, I kind of just got into it that way. I remember I watched the movie great balls of fire. Yeah. Which is like a really great movie yeah. about Den- Jerry Lee Lewis. Dennis Quaid and yeah, Jerry Lee um, Lewis. Incredible yeah. as Jerry Lee Lewis. And I kind of just started like emulating what was in that movie. And then from there, uh, like hooked up with some guys at school. And like, I, I think back on it and you think about like the way things are today. Like we were eighth graders 
And we were playing gigs at what's that? What's the rodeo? Like all, all the different places. Yeah, it was like it, Hot Shots, oh, Oasis. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, there were so many different things. Uh, I don't remember the. So the when latest, it was Hot yeah. Shots two, mm -hmm. I think Part we're two? like Part we are like in. I, I'm I'm not shitting you. We are like in the eighth grade, and we're going in there to play a gig. And this guy who's like the roughest dude ever just looks at us and he's like, "All right." You guys are all 21, right? And we're like, mm -hmm, yep. Yeah. yeah, we're 21, <laughs> yeah. sure. Yep. And we like just started gigging out in town, like at an unbelievably young age. But like in the 90s, like more people were doing that. Yeah. There aren't a lot of bands anymore. I, I think like the 90s that. presented like a like a more accessible path in to music. Like cuz a lot of 90s bands that you like, like they weren't really all that They're talented. not great. No. no. Mm -mm. <clears throat> it was just like, you know, you just did it. So, like, when I was in school, there were, like, you know, there were, like, four or five bands at the high school. And I think you know? there was a hunger for kids that age, my age, even a little bit younger. They just wanted that connection. And I think that yeah. music, especially the live gigs, created that opportunity to come and be like, we don't even know these songs. Yeah. But we're here. Right. And we're going to hang out. And we're going to learn the, the, the notes. And we're going to learn the words. And we're going to yeah. sing. And we're going to jam out. And, and it created that connection. And side sure. note to what you were saying, like, I, I do think like talent is like a, a factor in you know playing music. But I think the most important factor is we have a saying in our house because Mela plays the piano. And it's um, what do they say about musicians that mm. don't practice? Nothing. Yeah. And so I think like for me and most of the people that I know – like the major factor is investing massive amounts of time practicing. Right. If you do that, like anybody can be good at music. If you just mm. invest lots of time and you and you approach it like a job, I think like unless you're just like a complete and total lost cause, uh, you will get better. Like th that's the thing about practice in general. Like um, I feel like sometimes people don't think that there's going to be this return but there always is. Like, if you work really hard at something, you will get better at it. Yeah. And so, yeah. I think it depends on how much heart you have in it as well. So it can be talent. It can be determination. It can be dedication. It can be passion. But you have to have a mix of all of them. And a lot of times, if it's not going to be your bread and butter, you have to be okay being poor. You yeah, have to be yeah, okay yeah. doing a side game. Yeah. You have to be okay yeah. not not being the best right away. And I've tried so many different things throughout my life to be like, oh, well, I can make easy money being an influencer. I can make easy money doing this. And right. it's like, well, if you don't really give a shit about it, right. you're only going to do it for a certain amount of time. How long have you been in this game? So you talked well, about the piano, but how old were you when you I mean, I'm 44. Kind of, yeah. My first band was when I was in the eighth grade. I probably started playing when I was like 12. Yeah, yeah. Math, math is not my strong Yeah, 30, yeah, mine either. We 30, don't 30, math. 30, yeah, but 30 years. I will say this. Um, one of the things that the 90s really did to a lot of musicians from my era is convince them that like you didn't need to be all that good and yeah. you could just like do it. As long as you were okay being in front of people. Yeah, so yeah. like really it wasn't until I was like 35, 36 that I started – like really aggressively practicing guitar. Really? Yeah, well, I always had other guys to lean on. You know, like I played in, in a band with like really great guys. And so you could always kind of lean on everybody else. But then, you know, like around here, it's like you don't have your pick of exactly who you want. Right. You know, so you have to kind of like take this and take this and take that. The, you know, the group that I play in right now, Gypsy Tango Foxtrot, like, that's kind of how we got Cheers, started. Cheers, by the way. <laughs> Rock salad. Hey, really. yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. So we, you know, we, we kind of started out doing something that was totally weird that, like, really shouldn't have ever led to any money at all. Like, we're, we do really well now. Like, uh, you know, we're probably one of the better paid accent, maybe the best. I don't know. Yeah, you're sought after. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, when we started, we, we were doing, like, gypsy jazz tunes from the 30s and 40s and like stellar there's no money in that you know but we had gotten to the point where we were like playing bars and stuff and we were like really like doing a good job then we added uh megan peters as a singer and we started kind of going in another direction where we did like um like what we like to do is we like to play songs that people know mm -hmm. in styles that they're not originally in sure you know 
Yeah. I, I want to say one thing about the the Mandela effect, though. Not to derail. No, please do because I'm talking so about, yeah. interested Listen, in your I get, take on I this. Listen, I get bored. I get no. super bored talking, talking about, about me. yourself. That and is I know. not um, a good segue. But go ahead. But um, it was okay. I think like, better than Britney. I think like the the, no, the, the thing with the Mandela way. effect oh. is is that a lot of times when people start talking about the a Mandela effect, they start going, "Well, no, it wasn't. No, no, it was like this. It was totally like this." I think that it like the idea is that there are like multiple realities. So like for my reality, Parallel. you know, for my reality, uh, what was the song? Uh, the the Bing Crosby song. I'll be yeah. home for Christmas. You can count on me like yeah. in my head 100%. Yeah. You know, I, I have a really uh, powerful Mandela effect memory. And it's when I was, oh, geez, I was probably like six or seven years old. So once again, it could be a totally false memory. Sure. But I was in Ben Franklin. Oh, you know, I was in Ben Franklin. I can smell it now. Where yeah. Walgreens is now. Yeah, I was in Ben Franklin, and uh, I'm walking around, and I knew who Pablo Picasso was. Mm -hmm. And I, they, the radio was playing, and over the radio they say, famous artist Pablo Picasso died today. But Pablo Picasso died like 10 years before that. Prior to. Mm -hmm. So, like, that was some, like, my whole life... When I would talk to people, I'd be like, yeah, Picasso died in like 86, you know? No, Picasso died in like the 70s. 70s, yeah. And, uh, but that stuck with me. I've, I've racked my brain about what that could have been that I heard. Some radio DJ who didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Yeah, or about. like, you exactly know, maybe it was like it was. a relative was of his. You know, I was, was young. It was probably Steve Yeah. Bolt. Well, it, could, Steve Ball. Steve Ball, right. it could also be yeah. like, and this is taking it on the lighter side, but when Luke tells a story, and I think I remember it completely different. It's because of my perception. Sure. Right? So I think that there are different perceptions that make it your own reality. Yeah. And I can't be argued with on that front. But right? I also, so, like, look, people have all sorts of weird, like, opinions about religion and whatever else. So I'm just going to say this because I, I don't feel like it's all that <laughs> crazy. Like, I kind of do buy in a little bit to the multiple realities thing. Yeah, parallel universe. I think universe. that when COVID happened... That was like a real moment where I really kind of bought into that idea. Yeah. That like. The multiverse. Yes. Like all of a sudden, like we did something and it just came crashing in. Somebody time traveled and fucked it all well, up. Well, yep. uh, yeah. the 2012 thing, you know, that's when everybody says that it started. And we all kind of like got off the, the thread that we were on and got on another. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. But uh, I think like that's the big thing. And, you know, like the the. Um, Nelson Mandela dying on Robben Island thing. Everybody swears that they remember that he died on Robben Island, you know, busting up. Which, by the way, what he did on Robben Island is, like, terrible. I was waiting for Like, this. his job was making gravel. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, they gave him, like, you know, like, the big rocks the big that rock. they'll have. There's a movie, And his too. job was yeah. crushing yeah. these yeah. rocks up. up into gravel. Like, it was unbelievable, yeah. you yeah. know, what, like, what he had to do. But, yeah, people remember him dying. And it's, like, to me... It's not a matter of objectively whether or not that happened. It's like this person had this experience and this person had this experience and we're all kind of like. Intertwined. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I don't and know. I, I, and I do think that we all experience life in different things and it's, it brings up a good point. I just heard this thing on a podcast like how I see myself or how you see me is 100% different than how anybody else in this room sees me. Sure. Or how my kids see me. So we all have our own realities. We all have our own, um, you know, thought process on how things are going. I do think, though, Berenstain Bears. Yes. Uh, Berenstain, Berenstain Bears, 100%. And I'm sorry. I, I when can't, I even yeah. see Berenstain Bears written, right. I go, what? What it is that? Right. Yeah. What is that? And then I wish I would have kept those books and then, yeah. you know, but in the grand scheme of things, is it that important? Yes, folks, yeah. it is. But, but now with AI and chat GTP and stuff, mm. you can just slap on a pair of blinders and you, right. can, sit in, you can sit in your recliner for 16 hours sure. and that's your reality now. Yeah. And yeah. that's what you're going to do. You're going to completely check out and then you go to bed and you're like, okay, what okay. am I going to do today in this world? Or so this I don't want to stray too far from um, what you're doing because I think it's freaking amazing. And, uh, you no, know, please stray. Okay, but spoiler, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I got to hear this performance that you all are going to hear, and I look over at Brittany and Bob, and we're all teary-eyed and blah, 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 so stay tuned for that. But uh, in you and I have agreed a lot on um, advances in certain things, right? Like population isn't necessarily a, a 
a strive, you know, it's not something we should strive for and something that we can't really uphold something or another. So when you're talking about technology and let's talk about technology and music, I think technology is vastly improving so quickly that it's kind of hard to keep up with. What are your thoughts on technology and music? And do yeah. you think that it's like going to quickly for us to keep up with i just am so well, interested well in so this. that and that does actually tie in like with the one mic thing like a, a huge part of that was so i was I, I i've been like trying to record an album for a long time i did a bunch of albums with bands and then i did one solo album like maybe i don't know 11 or 12 years ago now and i've been trying to do another one and i think like the problem that i ran into is like i would just do like a thousand takes of something like just trying to get something perfect and you could even like, even with technology now, you just like, you play guitar take A, you play guitar take B, you like this part of A, you like this part of B, you just like- Splice it. Yeah, yeah. Splice them right together. Yeah. Yeah. It's super simple. But so but it's that not... was a big driving force behind this one mic thing because I felt like that just like, it sucks a lot of the magic out. Like I love, like <laughs> when you get in my car, uh, like much to the chagrin of Brittany <gasps> and- uh, We were gonna talk about this. <laughs> and Mela. Uh, it's always like stuff that they don't want to listen to. Beethoven. It's like stuff. Yeah. So the classical music channel, but also the, the forties channel yeah. is a big one in my car. Yeah. And it's so I love sure. the, um, I love the low fi one take aspect of that. Like yeah. you listen to, uh, Frank Sinatra oh. from the forties. That is one take. Yeah. It's like so that guy cool. was playing. There was a, there was a, an orchestra out there. And he's in a vocal booth, and he can see them, and he does one take. You know what the craziest thing about Frank Sinatra is? And you, you, you think about this now when you listen to Frank. You never hear him breathe. Nope. You never hear him you go. You can hear me breathe You on never hear him go nope. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. right before he starts singing. Right. It's as if he doesn't breathe. Yeah. It's just the notes come out. They're all perfect. And he'll, he'll belt something out. And then when he goes to deliver the next line, like if it was me, I'd be like, I did it my way. <gasps> yeah. And then I deliver the next line. Nope. Frank does not, you know? Nope. So, and there wasn't the technology to no. eliminate that. No. So it just had so to be I pure think, talent. I think that, okay, so like there's the artist in me that says like, this is all valid and good and it's great. But then there's also the snob in me that's like, Amen. And, and the 90s, once again, like were a bad time for me to come up because it's like, that part of me is like, uh, no, you should be able to do what you do. You should be talented. I think in some regards, like where we're at right now with technology, it's made a lot of the, it's made a lot of like the production easier, but also kind of soulless. I I'll tell you this. I don't remember where I heard this. Um, but like someone was talking about this. If you were to take music at any era before the 2000s, and take it back in time 15 years, you would blow the minds of the people that were listening to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you took music from right now back 15 years, yeah. nothing. Yeah. Because it's like, all become this? like the same. Like we get on threads of like things that people do, um, but like it, it wouldn't be mind blowing because it's all become like this sort of synthesized. Well, it's like thing. overproduced and I think that AI or any kind of uh, technology takes the heart out. And we talk about it here a lot that, you know, when Brittany writes a story or Bob or David or anybody else, you can do that really easily with AI. You can yes. do that easily. My students do it sometimes. Right? Yeah. And you Turn know it. Papers, yeah. But you know it. I, heart, I know that it's not their voice. It's not <laughs> yeah. genuine. Yeah. It's Absolutely. not authentic. Yeah. And I think that what you're doing definitely at least puts a barrier up to that to say, you know, yeah. we should appreciate uh, the actual talent, the actual heart, the the voice that's going into this, not something that's out there that can just formulate something, uh, you know, in a split second. My buddy uh, Hank Richard would say that. Love Hank. Yeah, me too. That right now, he, always, he says this to me, like right now, there is more amazing music out there than there ever has been in the history of the world. Really? Because so many people are doing this. Yeah. You know? Uh, but it's about like sort of finding it, you know, like albums aren't the same. People don't listen to albums like they used to. A lot of it's based around like one song. But do you think a lot of that has to do with confidence? Because now that you have technology, you're like, well, I, c I don't feel confident in my voice. So I'm going to use this technology to 
quote unquote, make it better when it probably could be better if it were authentic. Yeah. I mean, right? I, I would like to see like a return to simplicity. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's like going forward. That's what that's, this is. That's what I want to do. I yeah, love it. That's what I want to do. It's just like, I like the mistakes. I like the, you know, the imperfections. Yeah. Well, we, uh, we're about to listen to you and, and, uh, and the one take you did, but before we do that, I mean, we, we touched a little bit on your, we've talked a lot, we've talked primarily about your music role and, you know, we've talked about your Frankie and you've talked about your teacher role. I want to talk to you a little bit about just briefly about just being a dad. Yeah. Okay. What, what is yeah. that? What has that <laughs> meant to you? Because you became yeah. a father when you entered Brittany and Mayo's yeah, life. Right. So, when you has has that when you when you began that journey yeah. and now you've become this family yeah what what has that meant to you and how has that influenced what? your creative juices yeah um you know the dad thing is so weird because you know so i was um like like i never thought that i was going to have kids like i was married for a little bit and then you know i got a divorce like shortly before i met Mar uh met Brittany. Uh, maybe I wasn't divorced quite yet. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, we but, don't uh, mind. <laughs> I was, I was certainly Ta single. I was certainly single. But Shit happens legally. <laughs> legally, I'm not sure the that I was divorced. Shot. But, um, Mandela I was, effect. I was the type of guy that would have never in a million years saw myself in that role, like getting together with in a, a dad girl. Role? No, like getting with a girl who already had a kid and then wanting to be that. You know. But then Filling, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. But so Filling then in. like the thing with Brittany and I is like, and, and I don't know that I would have like gone for like a Brittany in a traditional sense. Uh, but like the way everything just kind of worked out, like that's kind of like, I was just very charmed by her and her whole thing. And actually I did not meet Mela. I actually remember when I did, uh, I had gone to a fish concert in Atlantic city and we had been like, together for a while, like a couple of months ish. Yeah. Cause like it was October when I went to the fish show. And so like, I think we got together in like August or something, but so she like one night she was like, do you want to see her? You know? Cause I had not met this kid, you know? And she was asleep, but like in a crib, like she's like, you know what? Not quite. Yeah. She was one and some change. Yeah. Cause she would have turned two in December. So yeah, I went in and saw her. And then I'd also seen like videos of her like on uh, Snapchat and stuff. And I, like, I can honestly say that like, as she and I started interacting, it, it was never this, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be your step. I was like that, uh, like that meme where it's like, uh, well, your your mom's got a rock and bod, so uh, I guess I guess I'm dad now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was never. <laughs> well, I guess here yeah, I yeah. am. I guess I'm dad. I really now, like you your know? mom's chits. But it was never. Yeah. It was never like because uh, like the sperm donor was still kind of in the picture. Yeah. You know, like he was never like really good in the term. Picture, but yeah. love it. But he was always just sort of like you know he'd show up for like the photo op and then peace out. So yeah, it was like sure. there was always that guy like you know there in the beginning, mm -hmm. and so. I feel like with Mela and I, like we like we chose each other, mm -hmm. like we just really started liking each other and wanting to interact with each other. And then that turned into this really great relationship. And then like, you know, not too long after that, then uh, sperm donor went away. And so then you find yourself in this kind of like this kind of situation of like, uh, you're like, well, I don't know, what is this? You know, like, what what role am I? Where do I fall? And I remember, like, um, one of the things that I started doing was I just started, like, hugging her a lot because I, like, felt like it's not like she wasn't getting enough love, but, like, just, like, as an encouragement. And, like, we just started getting really close. And, like, before long, like, yeah, I mean, she's calling me dad. And, uh, you know, like, it, in my mind, like, whenever anybody says, like, stepdad, like it's almost like a dirty term to me because I'm like I'm not her I'm not her stepdad. You're her like, dad. I am her yeah. I am her dad. Like in the same way that someone who adopts a child is the father of that right. kid. You know, like there's absolutely no distinction between those two things to me. I mean, and you know, I guess the moral of the story is you know she's almost 13 now, and it's uh it's the best. Uh, thing that's ever happened in my life like like this kid is the most important thing in my 
in my life. I'm like, she's the best, man. Well, so, I've had a 13 year old daughter. So <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, yeah. okay, I was so just going to say, you. she's less likable no. now <laughs> okay. than she was in the beginning. So but I was going to say, the way, and I'm not going to like pimp you up on some kind of pedestal or whatever, because I think that this is what you were made for. So this is kind of like the serendipity of, uh, you know, musical talent. Everything that's happening in your life is supposed to be happening. I do truly believe that. Uh, it's strange to me that you didn't look at Britney and was like, yeah, because I look at her every day and I'm like, yes. Yeah, there was that. Right? Like you, there was yeah, also like, like, run what the for hell? the hills. Well, do you okay, want okay. This? I yeah. understand That's, that too. Yeah. But also, like, you have just, uh, Brittany talks to me a lot about how you are the guy for Mela and yeah. uh, for her. And it's so heartwarming and refreshing to me yeah. that well, plus. Th you just. Yeah. Well, when you see him interact, I mean, it's like, yeah, you're oh, absolutely it's a right. Yeah. It's, step yeah. it's like, no, well, and step dad doesn't even, I mean, he's just, that's not dad. even a thing. Well, like, so, yeah. I can't stress enough that like, honestly, like we, like we really chose each other. Yeah. Like we really like, I think somebody up here. And yeah. I'm not like super we really religious. just like hit it off and like, she was so fun and charming and yeah. interesting and like, and like, unlike, you know, like a lot of other kids and like, just like, yeah, we just kind of like, we just. And sometimes yeah. I think. You, when you meet someone, even if by chance, you don't even know it, but you need each other and yeah. you kind of balance each other out. And then there's all, there's I think all that's these, exactly what it was. right. And then there's all yeah. these extra things yeah. that kind of come into play and you're like, holy shit, well, this plus, is amazing. Plus you yeah. have to deal with a lot of rotten kids. So it's nice <laughs> that you get <laughs> one. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So kidding. I wasn't yeah. going to roll into the teaching, <laughs> yeah, but no, um, right. I do have to mention it yeah, before we go. Job. So Mikey, it, Mr. Scholl is my daughter's uh, teacher yeah. and she has never been interested in school. <laughs> Not ever once. She doesn't give a shit about it. Uh, now I see her studying. She asked me to help her study. You have created a bond with us. So thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, also, you just have this innate ability when you're around people. And I know I don't speak just for myself. People just feel great around you. And so your music makes you um, even more I don't even know the word like you I feel your music I feel yeah. you I feel Britney like your whole aura about you and I don't want to get so ugh, but you know what I'm saying that you know everything that you guys stand for everything you talk about everything you are you're so genuine you're so authentic it is felt in every aspect of your communications everything you guys do your your interactions with people your music though I will tell you, when I'm sitting in that chair, I don't ever remember a time where I've really felt music the way that I feel it when you perform it. Nice. And I'm not trying to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know, gross. Uh, sitting over there, I was like, holy sh, am I the only one getting sweaty and crying? I look over <laughs> and I'm not. It's so good. And you said, I don't generally do vocals. Yeah, I don't really sing that much anymore. I think that's a <laughs> that is a damn shame. So yeah. I will say that, uh, and we don't have to wrap. I you just can hate do whatever. sing. I don't like singing. I just don't. I've never liked the sound of my own voice. What have you ever heard it? <laughs> I have. Okay. You know it's interesting. Uh, like you know what a lot of people say is when they hear their their voices recorded for like the first couple of times. Takes you guys to are get probably used to it. you guys. Yeah, uh, well, Bob, you've probably established this a long Mine's time ago like but for you 75, guys 75,000 yeah but for you guys like you're this. probably just getting to this point of like after a while when you hear your voice recorded it starts sounding like you but in the beginning yeah. when you hear your voice you're like yeah. oh shit well it's that's like that terrible. first time you left a voice message on your friend's voicemail and yeah. you, they let you hear it and you're like oh yeah. my god delete that yeah. that's how i sound uh okay. but so you know I don't like. I've never seen my. I've never like really felt like I was all that likable of a person. What? Uh, but okay. I'm just like. I'm not sandbagging here. I don't. I. I, I guess I. I don't care. Uh, but like I. Join um, the club. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't <laughs> give a shit. Okay. So yeah. I'll cut you there. So real quick, how do in this whatever? How do you deal with being in a crowd of people? And if you see somebody that you know you're not like super interested in your your vocals or your music, do you just like keep going? You're just like whatever playing like playing I stopped playing like as a singer songwriter because I, I always compared it to uh, <laughs> I always compared it to masturbation 
Okay. Uh, yes. There's just kind of knew no, we were gonna get here. There's just sort of no. I was just <laughs> kind of felt like there was like no point to it other than your own personal gratification. Sure. There's a little guilt when you're so done. So that was like, like a mm-hmm. major reason Is why it? I stopped doing. Bob's like not at all. Not for him. <laughs> I stopped playing like in that fashion of me like like I always think about the um, doing it for someone else. I always think about the what's the. Uh, Animal House. Yeah. yeah. You know? I gave yeah, my, my love, love a cherry. cherry. I was thinking about that guy. <laughs> and I'm like, that's exactly what it's like. Like, why do I need to subject this bar full of people to this bullshit? Because you, you think know? Blue Tarsi is going to rip the guitar out of your hand? <laughs> I, I wish that he would sometimes. <laughs> but so I've always wanted to do something that was, like, more interesting, you know? So I always wanted to, like, add musicians to, like, make it cool. Yeah. But so, yeah, so I kind of got away from the, like, singer, individual guy thing. I've just never been into that because it just feels like it's just re- it's more about me yeah. than it is about everybody out here. And so, right. so to answer yeah. your question, yes. when you play a bar or something like that, you just have to – unless you're, like – Elton John. You just have to say fuck it. You just have to be okay with yeah. the fact that you are background music. Yeah. And so that's really like my group, Gypsy Tunga Foxtrot, that's really what we like started doing. We were just like, just what if we were just like background music? Yeah. You know? Yeah. What if we were just like cool, interesting stuff that if you want to zone in for a second, it's going to be great. But then you can just go right back to your conversation. Yeah. You know? So that was kind of our, our ideology from the beginning. Well, I, I can think. tell you that queued up, uh, you know, one mic, this is going to be outstanding. I truly do feel music, even though I'm not musically inclined, and I know that I'm not alone there. Feeling music when you don't know anything about music is, is the only way that music is really enjoyable. Perfect. The more you learn about the thing, the less enjoyable it becomes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, that's awesome. Yeah, See? True. And then I love that you're doing, uh, you know, doing the thing for other musicians and – I really think that if you don't listen to this, you're going to be doing yourself a disservice. So, not just because it's Mike, not just because it's uh, yes. local musicians. So we're going to launch. Uh, I, we got a Facebook page queued up. Uh, we're going to launch this preview video tomorrow, like around the time that this airs. Yeah. And then I'm going to start putting out like about one a week. Can right you, now, I've got like six in the can. Can you give us your first? Is that I don't a know, teaser? like. Uh, <sighs> Give us I, the first initial. I originally thought that it was going to be me, but mine is kind of weird. Mine is me playing a Debussy, Claude Debussy, the, you know, the turn of the century, turn of the 19th or 18th century uh, piano player. I'm playing a piece by him. So I was originally going to do that, but I'm like, that's going to be like, eh. So I think probably the first one that I'm going to come out with is maybe Devante and TK from Windbreaker, which was just unbelievably great. Who doesn't uh, love Devonte? Yeah, yeah Devontae no, I know. Here. Filmed in awesome. Street, Spring Street Bar. Nice. Uh, Brittany hooked up like she 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 got yes. on the horn and she was like, "We needed everybody everybody to come out. We got a bunch of extras in there. Yes. Road let us open up on a Sunday to do it. So I'll either do that one or maybe uh, the one that we did with Cheeks McGee is great. Uh, Katie Smith and Corey Tappy. That one is just like amazing, incredible. Like, like her even, song yeah. is so good. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know one of those. It's not going to be me for the first one just because mine's kind of weird. Uh, but then I'll, you know, they'll, they'll start up. coming up periodically. All right. So we are going to listen to him now. Are we? I had yes. one more question. <laughs> oh, one more. Uh, how is it listening or living with Brittany? <laughs> I just had to ask. It's her birthday. I was totally going to stay uh, away from that. No, you got to ask. She's I think that, um, I think that there's like, there's like two phases. Maybe there's multiple, but there's like two main phases of my, of my life with Brittany. It's pre-MRN and post-MRN. Yeah. And I think it's great because, like, so when she was bar, just bartender Brittany, I don't mean to say bartender Brittany. Not just. Not just. Not just. She's Quincy's, she's Quincy's, Quincy's bartender. Best bartender. Yeah. Yes. Bartender so yes. when it was just that, like, it was, it was wild to, to watch the her building this model that I, I really, like, got to give her credit for because, like, she really did build this this idea of, like, yeah, the social did. media advertising of yeah. she built the a brand. shift. Her brand. Yes. She built a brand. She built a brand, which is why probably she got the job with MRN, you know, like, because she had cultivated this thing. So that was always really interesting to watch and, and to kind of be on the sidelines of. But then, like, now that she's with Muddy River News, 
Now it's like she's still bartending, which is great. But like now she's able to take those same kind of like skills and move them into all these other avenues. And so it's it's been uh, – it's been like really like kind of amazing to kind of watch the whole thing. MRN in general. I'm not trying to kiss ass here, but like the, oh, kiss the, ass, the, please, the, the please do kiss away. The trajectory of this thing, I think, is very exciting. Like I always like whenever I hear anybody and they're like talking about getting their news from like the Wig or WGM or KHQA, I'm just like, why? What are you doing? If it's local, time, bro. If it's local. Yeah. There's nothing more authentic than this, and I think a great part of that and one of the things that has helped people gravitate towards that is like the slack that you give to like things like this people like where you allow this sort of looseness and people to be real and genuine you let britney go and do a a promo for a car wash thing in a in a swimming suit and you, you can get on here and you can you know you can like speak your minds i think that that has been the the division point. We want it to be personality driven. We want it to be real. Man. And when you know, the, when we bu- were building this thing, and David and Brittany were like the first two pieces, and then Ashley and everybody's kind of come along. And yeah, it's it's local people doing local news, but also having local conversations and local personalities. And again, it's not all news. Sometimes it's just entertainment. Yes. Sometimes it's a guy playing his yes. guitar. Yeah. Sometimes and when I see people online and they're and they're like. Um, that's not news. I'm like, who gives a shit? Yeah, that's like, do you want just, just news? news? We're it's, not it's just a news company, and yeah, I have to, I have to have that conversation with yeah, like, employees so, sometimes. So that, so that angle, I think, has really like given it the edge. So like, living, <laughs> wrap it up. She says, yeah, well, she says, she, no, we can't, we can't. We're says, so interested. We're, we're, I'm so long. interested. Yeah. We're, fra- yeah. we're pulling a Frankie. We're pulling but, a Frankie. Come on, reel it in. Ultimately. People like it's this, a lot so. of it's a lot. I just wrote her a a, a birthday card, mm. and I think what I said in it mm. was, um, "Living with you is like the the full spectrum of color. It's the full range of it's human Roy emotion. Roy G. Bib, baby. It's the full range of human emotion. There's tons of this. There's tons of this because she is a very busy and driven person, and, and she's uh, a woman. Yeah, Sybil. Yeah, no shit. We do it. You know." <laughs> We do it. <laughs> but uh, I think that this team that you guys have going on is like a really special thing that it's, needs to be cultivated. Because yeah. okay. it's like, we're it's doing our fantastic. best. Mikey. So we're going to let you play now. All right. And thank right. you for sharing your talent with yeah. us. Thank Sorry, you. Kept... Brittany Thanks for us. having us. Glad to have you. Love you guys. Uh, we'll be back next week. We'll go a day early for Turkey Day, and we'll see you next week.
jump the gate to my old man's place And I'll drink until it's dark And no inside my heart that you'll return to me Ooh. 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 I've been reckless I try to fight the very homes Where the boxers Put on their gloves And beat their hands raw And I did the same thing After you were gone So I'd say you Are you tired of being alone Do you grow ever Lonely demons in the dark night hollering wild And say, I know you can't stand me So why don't you go on me Leave me like a ghost I jump the gate to my old man's place And I'll drink until I'm dark And no one